So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at 3D tracking data and getting that camera data from After Effects directly into Maya. Now there are a number of pieces of software that we'll use, which I'll touch on at the end of the session, at the end of this video session. Um, we can go over each of those, um, not in too much depth, but just to make you aware of them. So what I'm going to do is, um, so you should be familiar with the UI now. I'm just going to right click within the project pane import file and I'm just going to pull this piece of footage in this is the piece of footage that we're going to track this should be 25 frames a second not 23.976 I'm just going to hit interpret footage main and change this back to 25 if you need to keep it 23.976 or any other frame rate keep it as that but this originally was 25 frames a second for some strange reason it's coming at that frame rate. Drag this down, you know, create new comp, and you can see that's the little bit of footage that I have. All I'm gonna do, right click, track camera. And what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna break this session down in a number of parts. I'll produce the solve, I'll get the data that we need and I'll export it and then I'll create a new video for pulling in that data in my and how we can maybe um, look at that and start applying effects and what our options are within my which is pretty, pretty much limited and we can apply any, any sort of 3D effect that we want them to and um, you've now got that 3D data in there, uh, so it will offer you a lot of flexibility. So, with that in mind, oh, there we go. Let's create a quick camera solve. I might actually ruin that through. If you if he's want to, I would recommend having that set and turned on detailed analysis, and that would generally give you better camera results. What I'm going to do is create a camera. So, the main thing <clears throat> in my um in this camera solve tool um is key to getting the data across from after effects to my is keyframe and all of these values or oh, oh, keyframe and zoom and focus distance um because when this camera gets exported and plugged into Maya they by default if they aren't keyed will be set to zero and um, it'll give some weird results. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this up so you can see all these um, keys. I'm just going to mark into two of these, put them at the end, and key all these as well. So all effect well they are the same value at the start and at the end. And there's no changes in the middle of any of these values here. And I'm just going to close that back down. So that's just that was just basically to lock those values so that they couldn't be changed. Let's drag that down a little bit as well. Let's hit the footage, camera. And we need a couple of points of reference. So I'm just going to grab a couple of points here. Right click, create 10 nodes. And I'm, the reason I'm creating 10 is that I want to make this uh, handful. Create three nodes. Scrub through the footage. Let's maybe drop those down. I'm not too bothered about the orientation of them. That's fine. That's more the pos positional data that I'm looking for. Create three nodes and maybe some of these as well. Create seven nodes and maybe a couple of there. Depend on what you want to do, you might want to apply some crazy effects to it. I don't know. Um, <coughs> create 15 nodes. So we've got lots of nodes now, and what we need to do with these is because when um, this tracking data gets exported to Maya, we need to hit P on the keyboard. So that we can keyframe the positional data of these locators within world space. So what we do is just mark into all of these, key that positional data, and go to the very end. Same again. Just run the mouse sort of through that. It should let us. Uh, one sec. No, it wasn't letting us do that. Let's just drag these through. It's just it's only after effects is just being a little bit difficult. Values, should we just let this? Um, maybe. I think it's just machine whatever. So now 
they should just be sticking okay they might be like a little bit of an update kind of thing but effectively they are sticking with it and then grab all of the nodes within the scene and just take this out and minimize them all you can see there that they will be moving relative to the position of that piece of footage it's just the delay you can see there they are sticking they are relative to where it should be I'm going to select the camera and all of the tracking modes and what I need to do is um, I need to locate the script and the script's just on my machine it's the AE3D export script that you need to Google that just to make you guys aware of it the 3D export script there you go, if you just go to A, E, Enhancers um, it's just this script, it's nothing fancy but it's helping us out here so, yeah, it's just it's just this link and if you just right click on this link and download the link file as A, 3D export so let's just desktop i'm just going to put that in there and script i'll just export pop it in there Everything's. there you go so i've got everything selected that i need to export the camera and the nose i'm not bothered about the footage and then if we go to file scripts run script file look on the desktop and then the 3D tracking should be allowing us to run that script for whatever reason it isn't. That's because what it's done is when it's downloaded, it's really important. AA3D underscore export dot gsx dot text. We need to remove the dot text um, extension. Use dot gsx. Fine. Um, so now if we cancel that and then go back. Script, one script file, desktop, click this, hit open. It brings you to this nice AA3D export window. So basically, what this will do is it will export only to your desktop. So I'm going to give this a new name of new camera track. New camera track. And then I want the options. I'm not too fussed about that, but you know, you can leave it on if you wanted to, but it just basically shifts the comp center as you as you do. So when that starts, when the comp starts, effectively it thinks that the comp camera and this origin is at zero, zero, zero world space in my, so I'll just leave it as it is, and we can manually manipulate that afterwards. So what I'm going to do is leave this off, hit export and then you'll start to see after effects begin to do its thing it will take time depending on the amount of nodes that you've used um, but <clears throat> depending on the amount of um, tracking data that you require um, if it's a particularly focused bit of work then you might need more tracking points within the shot to help you out um, I guess see one thing to point out why that's just working in the background. Um, so yeah, I did mention other bits of software. So you've got Synthize, a really, really cool bit of uh, tracking software, really high end. You've got PF Track, which I really like. Um, it's very, very useful. Um, it does motion tracking um, as well as camera tracking. Um, They've got different versions of it. They've got node-based version, which you can see there. They basically build a point cloud. Very useful. You can see it's kind of some kind of drone or whatever with the promotional video. Um, Boris Effects, Mocker Pro, which is kind of looked at with um, Mocker AE, but Mocker Pro is more advanced. You can export uh, FPX camera data, um, things like that. So it's it's very powerful. So you know, as well as that, there's also Luke, um, 3D camera tracker, 
which is um, yeah, very powerful, really, really high on the see there. Um, so yeah, there will be other versions out there that I haven't mentioned. Bougie Bullet um, is one, but those for me are probably the sort of better ones. But this is just only to use if you're perhaps on a bit of a budget or you don't have the software. Right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to fire up my now. And the next part will be hooking the camera up. So, there is one sec. Right, so we've got the scene open. If we go to, so the mic is open, not the scene. If we go to file, open scene, desktop, you can see all of my junk. New camera track, which is what we've just done. Hit open. Let's create a camera. Perspective. Let's look through the camera. Um, and what we need to do is let's just double check. So it was. Let's just double check the frame rate. Just make sure everything tallies up between After Effects and my 25 frames a second. The comp. The comp here. 25 frames a second. Let's just double check in here as well. Command K. Just make sure 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. Bring all 25. It's purely just to install. You know, that there's not going to be no issues with uh, firmware. So you can see there we do have some camera data that's being recorded. So what we'll do is within our camera, so this is the tracked camera, if we go to view, image plane, import image. I've already pre-rendered this uh, the background plates out. So we'll go 3D tracking, image sequence, these are already done at 25 frames a second as well. Frame zero, hit open, and you'll see there we do have our first frame. Okay, the next part is Image plane, image plane attributes, camera image planes, and just turn on use image sequence, hit that, and you should see that there. Uh, you do get that camera moving. And now you do notice a little bit of a pop. There's something really important to mention here. You can see here, and after uh, my, I'm starting at frame one, you, know, you can see that little zero there. But, uh, the timeline in my is starting at frame one, and it ends at frame. 312. Let's have a look at After Effects. Um, in After Effects, it actually starts at 0 and it ends at 310. So, again, we just want to, everything to tally up between one piece of software and the next 310. And 310. And just type in 0 and 0. And then everything, you shouldn't get that little weird pop of footage that you were getting before. The next issue is we want to try to get this grid. The world flow in line with the plane of footage that we want to project onto. So if we select the camera and all of the nodes and hit Command G, we've created a group. So this is that's just in this scene. So what we could do is let's just hit this little arrow up. Let's just push it up maybe to maybe five, say perhaps, and then let's hit rotate and. If we hold, con select the text, and it here, and hit control, left mouse button, you can see there how you can manually rotate them. Well, basically, we're grouping the camera and the whole scene so we can effectively adjust the orientation of that scene now. So that's pretty good. You might notice a little bit of disparity between the two. That's what we'll look at in the next video.